We're going to say, and we're live. It is Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020, 5 o'clock p.m. Yes, it is a dog shirt day. It is a massive thunderstorm day in Washington, D.C., but it's bright and sunny in Cape Cod and Cambridge, Massachusetts, where there is no time difference between here and there. So we only have to say one time zone today. Uh, as you all know, who watch in lieu of fun, we had a little baby cannon mishap uh, over the weekend. Computer got destroyed. Baby cannon got disintegrated and spread all over the lawn at the cabin in the woods. We'll explain this But in a this for us. did not deter me from an impulse purchase of eight brightly colored smoke grenades, which showed up in a catalog and I just clicked by before I knew it. And I was thrilled to learn last night after in lieu of fun that they had been shipped and they are on their way and they're going to arrive. And so if people have ideas with what to do with eight brightly colored smoke grenades. Is the smoke brightly colored or is the grenade who cares if the grenade is brightly colored? No, no, the, the smoke, smoke is brightly colored. colored. I mean, think like, you know, your your rainbow flag or something, only smoke grenades. And um, and so I'm thinking this has a lot of potential for the baby cannon fans of the world. What are we going to do with eight brightly colored smoke grenades? They're arriving on Monday. And I leave you with that thought. If you have ideas, if you have suggestions, I want them. We are not allowed to have fun anymore. But in lieu of fun, we have, we're going to have smoke grenades. And we do have Ross Trudeau, who is an old, old friend of Kate's and who designs crossword puzzles, which is super cool because I can't even do crossword puzzles. Ross Trudeau, welcome to In Lieu of Fun. Thanks for having me, guys. Are you, yeah. can you, are you, are, could you, could you guys both tell me like what your personal emotional relationships with crosswords is? I, I'm, I'm always uncomfortable talking about crosswords unless I know, you know, kind of what the context is. Yeah. Um, let's see. I never did them never were part of like my culture growing up or my parents never did them i know that like some people always like had grew up with them and they were like my mom did like the jumble and a crossword like <laughs> um and uh yeah and then i discovered them i think after college and i bought one of will shorts's oh you know what it was actually this is one of the great things about new york was that like someone had put out like 15 undone Will Shorts crossword books mm. that like they just didn't want anymore out into the thing and I was like very poor post college and I like picked them all up and then I started doing crossword and then it was a crossword puzzle person um, and then fall. I started like learning the tricks like aloe and Alna and like the thin man's dog and like S -I -E. things like yeah, exactly. So that's like, and now I've gone through a very long dry spell of not doing any of, and then I did them compulsively on my phone for a long time and then kind of just got over it or not over it, but took like a break. Just kind of like haven't done any in a while until today. What better um, time then? to start doing crosswords again, but in lieu of fun. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Don't diss your person I have like never. that. <laughs> I have never done crossword puzzles. Um, no. They're one of those things that I am aware that people like me do, but that I don't do. And whenever I try, I am shockingly bad at them relative to what I think of as my intellectual cohort. Um, and uh, so I find them faintly embarrassing, actually, because I, you know, I can write a sonnet, but I can't do a crossword puzzle, you know, and um, and so I'm I'm it sort of feels like something that I should be good at. And I'm really not. I I actually have a pretty good vocabulary. I'm relatively verbally adept. But, you know, there's something about the visual thing that I don't do very well. Or maybe it's that I'm 
less intelligent than I think I am, but I'm not very good at crossword puzzles. In fact, I'm very bad at them. And I, I'm aware that there are these people who, I, not, not all of whom I think are, you know, all that bright, who can do crossword puzzles and the sort of rate limiting step is the speed at which they can write. You know, they're, they're these people who, and I don't understand that at all because I look at, you know, one across and I'm like, well, what the fuck could that be? Um, so my relationship with crossword puzzles is a bit adversarial to be like, I, I kind of think of them as a, as this class of puzzles that spits in my face regularly. And I, uh, um, am, you know, I think feel I think I feel about them the way a lot of people feel about Rubik's cubes that they were sort of put on Earth to make fun of me. Um, I thought that was drawing, Ben. I thought that was art. Your art skills. You know, actually, I, it's a very similar relationship. <laughs> Except, like, I've accepted about myself that there's no reason why I should be good at the visual arts. But the crossword puzzle is sort of like something like. I mean, I do write for a living. I'm a kind of verbal person. I don't use a whole lot of, you know, I speak in full sentences and sometimes in full paragraphs. I'm not using a lot of filler words. These are things you would associate with somebody who would be good at crossword puzzles. And so I have all these kind of, and you know, kind of adjacent crossword puzzle-y skills. Um, they don't include anything like doing a crossword puzzle. And so I feel a little bit affronted by crossword puzzles in a way that I don't, for example, feel about uh, painting. Okay. You know, it's funny. You, you mentioned uh, feeling that people like me ought to or, do, or sometimes are decent at crossword puzzles or at least like solving them sometimes. And, you know, I hear that a lot. And... I, I, I never solved crossword puzzles until about 10 years ago when I was teaching creative writing in little uh, high school in New York. And one of my students, one of my favorite students, this real smart ass, walked in one morning super early at 7 a.m. I'm reading the New York Times at my desk and she asked if I could do the crossword puzzle. And the way she asked, you know, she was trying to tease because this first generation Mexican American 14 year old from San Leandro, California had the impression that doing crossword puzzles was a white thing. And and moreover, like a white college educated adult thing. And and she she wanted to like tease me along those lines. And in, and in fact, I, I never did the puzzle. So I turned to it and it was like a Tuesday and I got stymied like halfway through. And she lorded that over me for some months. And that sort of set, you know, set the competitive part of my brain going. And I, and I said, well, I'll show you, you smart ass. And, <laughs> that really is, good that is the Ross process. that I knew in college. And that is like, um, but Ross, before we kind of get into that, although that is like a beautiful kind of like teaser for like what we have to look forward to. Um, mm. What, tell me, so like after school, I actually, yeah. I think the last, one of the last times we hung out, we were hang, we were like, act, it was the middle of summer of 2006. And you had found a hundred dollar bill in the back of a cab. Do you remember this? I and sure we do. all went and bought sushi at some like nice sushi sushi restaurant in the East Village. And then we went to like Washington Square Park and played in the fountain because it was a super hot night and none of us had air conditioning. Um, and it was super, I know it was probably wasn't one of the last times we hung out. We hung out that whole summer, but like that's one of my like real like kind of New York moments that I really remember. Um, but then you moved to Boston and you were going to go into teaching. Um, and I know you went to work at a charter school, but kind of like you went and you taught for a while. What were you teaching? Like, I didn't know yeah. what was the structure like? How did that kind of go? Uh, moved to Boston specifically to work at a charter school that I um, had read about in, in a newspaper and just walked in the front door and said, hey, uh, could I get a tour? And that's actually the organization that I work for to this day. And there was a, a three-year stopover where I was teaching creative writing um, at a high school that I mentioned in, in Oakland. Um, but apart from that, um, it's been a one long continuous run at, at uh, this nonprofit uh, here in Boston. And for the last five or six years, I've been creating um, online uh, resources for teachers, um, including online curriculum. Well, that's super relevant. That's a... <laughs> 
Uh, I want to. I'll get. To, we'll get to that at the end. I want to do all the crossword stuff. But like, so okay, so student kind of comes in. You do your first crossword. You get stymied halfway through it. Mm. You decide to get super into it. Like, and then what? How does one get super? Like, I went through a similar thing, and my solution was doing all of the Monday New York Times crosswords until I could figure them out. I also want to say that I also have like a very that crosswords are very like in popular culture they are like referenced in like certain types of like scene placement or status placement like like no it is like there will yeah, be like yeah. a scene like and someone is like well do, I did like I did the Friday in pen on like in 25 minutes or something like that I mean, I literally look at a Friday crossword puzzle. I didn't know that they got harder as the week went on. I didn't know any of these things, but these were all things that kind of like people who were into it knew. So I kind of sympathize with your, your student. How did you get into it? How did you kind of get into the culture and how did you get into the mechanics? Well, and how did you go and right. And how did you go from doing them to making them? Right, that's exactly. a, that's a leap. I think like, I know a lot of people who are into the crossword puzzle and there's a kind of Sunday much, you know, Sunday crossword machismo thing, but I don't know a whole lot of people who go from doing them to making them. And you're the only person I know or have ever met who does that who isn't in prison. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, the other, so I'm not, serious. The other, the, yeah, other, yeah. the other person I know who designed crossword puzzles uh, did it in prison for 15 years or something. Yeah. Where you have a lot of time, you know? I've, I've heard a, a couple of interesting stories about New York Times crossword constructors who, who learn the, the trade in, by mail in prison, essentially. Um, and for the record, when I started out, it, <laughs> I did want to like show this smart ass who was boss, but I also wanted to, you know, model a growth mindset around, you know, getting better at something over time. So it wasn't a completely selfish, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Impetus. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think one thing you, you, you learn pretty quickly if you start, um, uh, doing any kind of crossword research online is there's this really robust ecosystem of online of blogs and crossword Twitter is is a is a, a rich uh, and, and, and surprisingly virtuous and pure community of um, a corner of the internet where uh, you'd expect most people to be showing up to be airing grievances um, because the, cro the crossword does make an implicit promise to you that like, it's gonna make sense and if you uh, are reasonably lettered and um, savvy you will be able to solve it um, and sometimes it it doesn't sometimes poor construction kind of undercuts that that promise and uh, and it becomes a, an exercise in masochism people take the internet to um, you know, compare wounds uh, but yeah for the most part it was reading about these individual construct crossword constructors online um, and lurking in the comment sections and picking up kind of uh, bits here and there about process um, and kind of reverse engineering it. Uh, so it was more of a, a lurky, obsessive, uh, creepy thing there at the end than anything else. I mean... It strikes me, so, like, one of the other things that's, like, maybe interesting about crossword puzzles for me is that, like, every time I look at them, all I can see is what did they mean by this? Like, that's, that is, like, the implicit thing, right? Is that you're supposed to deconstruct whatever it is the clue is that they're giving you and try to figure out what, what were they thinking when they came up with this? And you kind of go down, like, a list of, like, ticks of just kind of, like, likely, it's almost, like, just definite, like, definitions in the dictionary do they mean the most mm. common definition they mean the least common definition is it a pun or is it like you know whatever and so um yeah i think that that's i think that's super interesting i just would have no idea where to even start with making one so like is sure. there is there an actual how do i put this is there like an actual like best practices for how you start yeah. making a crossword puzzle absolutely um, but before you an before you answer that question, we're getting a number of comments about differential audio levels between you and Kate and me. Um, uh, that is, you're significantly quieter than Kate and I are. 
Um, is there any, uh, can you bring up your audio level a little bit? I'm going to lean in. I'm going to lean in towards the, the microphone. A That's little better. Bit. How about that? Um, perfect. Great. Perfect. Uh, okay, great. Um, yeah. Uh, most crossword puzzles have a theme. There's a gimmick that uh, the five or six longest across answers um, share something in common. Sometimes it's wordplay. Sometimes it has to do with uh, the, com the composition of the letters in those answers. And Why is it always very... across? It's not always across. Okay, so it could, sometimes, it could vary. Sometimes those theme answers are arranged vertically if they uh, if the theme necessitates it. Um, like if it's asking you to do something um, with an up down or top bottom word play uh, uh, gimmick, then you you might orient your theme answers um, vertically but that's where you start you start with that that gimmick um that idea that theme um and you come up with those answers and you, you slap them down in the grid and the rest of it is uh trying to arrange black square architecture in such a way that you can fill the rest of the grid with words that aren't going to piss everyone off and um hopefully actually bring a little bit of, of joy <laughs> Yeah, so um, how do you start one, basically? Do you start with a grid, or do you start with a theme? Do you start with, like, the idea of, like, something? Okay, so you, this one was quite clever um, and perfect for me because the theme was, or, like, the, the theme was social media. And, um, and so all of the things, like, went towards that. Um, and, but do you start with that? So you'd have to start with that, right? That has to be like the root. Do you start with like the root, the last, like if there's five clues, the one clue that ties it all together, do you start with social media mm. and then create all the others? Or do you, I don't know, like how does it work? Yeah, what you're describing is the chicken egg uh, problem of crossword solving. And the word, uh, there's a word for that particular answer. It's called the revealer answer. It's the one that uh, that does the, if you get to that part of the puzzle, that's where um, the constructor tries to uh, telegraph what the gimmick is. Um, what if you skip ahead to that part? Is that cheating? No. Okay. You can Sorry. even look up answers. There's no cheating in Asking crosswords. Asking for a friend. <laughs> There's no cheating in crosswords. <laughs> well, here, here let's, let's take an example. So um, if we were gonna make an in lieu of fun themed crossword puzzle, um, mm -hmm. we'd start by like, looking at the title of your podcast and by looking at your names. And we try to see if there were any interesting patterns or features of your names or the, the name of the podcast that might be repeatable across multiple other words or phrases. So for example, uh, ben, ben, how do you pronounce your last name? Wittis. Ben Wittis is an interesting uh, collection of letters. Because I noticed, I just wrote it down, and looking at it, like if I were to try to uh, backwards and reverse engineer a theme, I note that like the word wit is hidden in your name. Um, yeah, you know, if I ever created an economic system, it would be called witticism. There you go. Maybe you should try constructing a crossword puzzle. You're halfway home. Um, <laughs> and I could, I could generate a revealer answer, like, I don't know, uh, the, the soul of wit, as in brevity is the soul of wit, and then all my theme answers would have wit uh, hidden in oh, the interesting. interior yeah. of those words, um, thus the soul of wit. Or um, Kate, do you have an interesting name? Clonic. There's a lot of uncommon K's. Of there are a few too many K's. You have to be careful. <laughs> It's a. <laughs> it's it's also a, a, a relatively uncommon letter in the English language, which makes it difficult to mess with. But I do notice that you have the word Nick at the oh, end of your name. That's true. So it occurs to me that we could uh, develop a theme around the phrase. End. So, like the end cut of a piece of meat. And we could develop a series of theme answers that have a synonym for cut at the end of the word. So Kate, Klon, Nick, or uh, what are some synonyms for cut? Hey, we can ask the audience. What are some synonyms for uh, for the word cut? 
uh, score. Score. Or uh, slice. Slice, snip. Snip, chop, slice. So That's you could do, for slash example, carve. Uh, we've already got enough. So yeah. uh, parsnip, for example, is, a, is an example of this end cut idea or uh, backslash. Um, or even you could get even kind of more implicit, like the word love shack or the phrase love shack has the word hack baked into the end of it. Oh, and crazy. So actually, I would right never there, think we already have. We already have a crossword theme, um, and that's that's well. Good but too. that's all built around my name, and it leaves Ben out. That's true, but um, that's it's true. okay. I'm <laughs> crossword puzzles are very crazy. happy. Crossword puzzles are mostly filled with white men, anyway. So we're we're trying to get representation a little more. I'm also like, yeah, really okay with um, uh, uh, with uh, uh. Uh, being, uh, uh, you know, because it would be really embarrassing if there were a crossword puzzle that were about me and I still couldn't do it. <laughs> you know, so I'm just, just perfectly happy for it to be about Kate. No, no, actually, I like this. You, like, I also note that, um, is your full name Benjamin? It is. So the I-N at the end of Benjamin and the W-I-T-T -T to begin your name I N W I T T is an anagram for nitwit. Um, so you have an interesting interior anag anagram, and you could. There's another theme right there. Like, how many phrases and words can we come up with that have an interior anagram of uh, of a of a nitwit? Um, and your re your revealer answer for something like that might be the phrase like motley fool. So the fool is the nitwit, and motley means it's uh, it's anagrammed. Oh, and we can we can hmm. do that till the cows come home. So I kind of want to know, like, is like is the difficult? What is it that makes the Monday crossword so much mm. easier than the Friday crossword? Is it that this underlying theme is so much more tangled? Like what you just described seems like three levels of thought more than I usually give like figuring out these things I'm like anagram of like of 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 uh of synonyms for uh cut is like way like I is that why I could never solve them <laughs> no we could make your average Friday New York Times puzzle to about Monday or Tuesday difficulty just by changing the clues it's all in the clues oh it's all in the hmm. clues. Okay, so here's the other thing. When you're doing the clues, how much do you use other resources like Google? Oh, all the time. Um, oh, yeah? There's a handful of the clues in a given puzzle that I'll spend a bunch of time trying to develop uh, some interesting word play. And sol regular solvers of crossword puzzles will be familiar with the kinds of things that uh, crosswords try to do to misdirect you um, and the other 75% of the clues a lot of the time words can only be clued in so many ways and uh, uh, you're kind of pigeonholed in that being said there are common words like Oreo you see in every goddamn puzzle you've ever solved and Oreo is, is like kind of this cult uh, phenomenon in the crossword constructing world, world where the, the game is to come up with uh, a new clue for Oreo every time you put it in your crossword puzzle, which gets different. So I, I assume that you, so you start with the theme and the three or four uh, long across or downs that uh, deal, that are related to that theme. But then a crossword puzzle gets awfully dense. Mm -hmm. And there are these sections of it that every letter is in, in fact, most are in uh, two words and a cross and a down. There aren't a lot of blank spaces. And the part of the crossword puzzle that has always perplexed me is how you maintain perfection in density. And... 
like the clues I'm totally I I get once you have a map you can make up a bunch of clues but how do you get um uh how do you get the 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 density high while keeping the the uh the the perfection of you know in which no letter is out of place you know i i hate to uh draw back the curtain and this might sound a little unromantic um but r robots do some of the work um there's crossword construction software that will help guide you so that when you start placing black squares around your theme answer the robot can tell you if you're uh constructing yourself into an unfillable corner um, really that's right that's um, kind of cool they couldn't have always been the but case crossword though, obviously yeah but i was gonna say crosswords are older than the robots they are um the first two or three puzzles that i uh sold to the new york times i did by hand um printing out uh excel spreadsheets and using a pencil and paper and that that's just a masochistic endeavor that I don't wish upon anyone. I was ignorant. I didn't know that software existed. So the idea is essentially um, con at that point, constructing becomes much more about uh, probabilities than about wordiness. So you don't put a black square below or to the left of the I, for example, just relatively few words end in the letter I, or you don't stack an X and a Z on top of each other because practically no words or phrases have an X and a Z consecutively in them. Um, and then you just sort of like iterate and there's a lot of erasing involved. Um, and, and that's how it worked for a long time. But that's, that's why your modern crossword puzzle, if you go online, there, there's a, a rich ecosystem of independent crossword puzzle blogs that put out puzzles on a weekly basis. And they're all better. They're all smoother than your average New York Times puzzle from the 1970s um, when you just kind of gave up at a certain point and you said, screw it, I'm going to have this absurd acronym or this like tiny river of, you know, uh, northern Siberia that no one's ever heard of because it's the only way to freaking finish this corner. Uh, yeah. and of the day. So you talked a little bit about publishing them in the New York Times and I re was reading your catching up on you by reading your website and you were saying that you submitted like 10 that got rejected. Uh, I don't understand what a rejected crossword puzzle looks like. <laughs> like, if it's done, then, like, if it works, then, like, doesn't it, like, pass muster? Like, how did you even, like, lots of, okay, so first of all, most people would have just done some fucking crossword puzzles, Ross. Then second of all, you didn't do that. You decided to start making them. Third, you decided to do them by hand. And then fourth, you decided you were going to try to publish them. How did you get to, like, the last stage of trying to, like, publish them? I'm, I'm sure it had something to do with a uh, nepotism and, and lingering inferiority complex because my father was in the newspaper every day. Uh, my dad draws uh, Doonesbury, the comic strip. And somewhere between the seventh and eighth rejection that I had to the New York Times, uh, Will Shorts ran back-to-back -back puzzles. This would have been like August, call it uh, 2016. He ran back-to-back -back puzzles that referenced either my father or Doonesbury on the same oh, day. Oh, what a jerk. <laughs> like, on the, the same, same day, day that I you. got my, like, seventh <laughs> rejection. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that activated, you know, some, uh, you know, something inside me that said persist and persevere. But a lot, most puzzles that I send to Will Shorts, he turns away because he doesn't like the, uh, uh, the quality of the theme um or uh or in, in the execution in some way um but it's it's cutthroat they get 100 they get 150 submissions every week so wow. what do you do with a uh crossword puzzle that the new york times rejects um there That's are question there are a dwindling number i would have said until about 2019 but the crossword is actually kind of in a little renaissance as of the last year and a half two years um but there are a handful of mainstream uh crossword puzzle outlets the wall street journal publishes um, a, an original puzzle every single day so does the la times um there are some online outlets that are well respected well trafficked um that you can send your crossword puzzles to um 
and so there are places, but most people tend to start with the New York Times just because, well, they pay the best, and there's, you know, it, it's the crossword puzzle. It's the gold standard as far as most solvers uh, uh, these days um, tend to think. Yeah, I don't uh, like USA Today crossword puzzles, or as I like to call uh, it, Blue Paper Daily. You take uh, that back. <laughs> are, no, like, you take <laughs> that back. I'm going to stick up for the the USA Today crossword puzzle, as of the, the last few months, is edited by uh, the most brilliant crossword constructor alive today. That's Amanda good, Moore. because the last time I did it, which was probably eight years Okay, I would like take that back. Fifteen years ago, it was really <laughs> not good. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a man named Eric Agard, whose whose name regular solvers of the New York Times will recognize because he's the most consistently published instructor of the last three or four years. Uh, they brought him on um, to uh, uh, to edit the USA Today crossword puzzle, and it's dope. It's a great puzzle every single day, and and. It's constructed by a woman about 75% of the time so far this year, which is bonkers when you consider the problems that the New York Times has had with the representation. The New York Times crossword puzzle is only made by a woman about a fifth of the time, at most, year over year. That's fascinating. So, so how long does a crossword puzzle take you? Uh... If we're doing a kind of a rush job for education purposes, you know, we could sit and make a puzzle here in 15 minutes if we wanted. Um, but if I'm really taking my time on on a grid, it'll take the better part of it. Yeah. And what's the difference between Just the 15 minute version and the better part of a day version? Usually the um, uh, the how involved the theme is. Like the the idea of come like end cuts with Kate Klon, Nick and backslash and love sh hack, you know that's a fairly. I'm like a little bit horrified by like the slasher film nature that you turned my name into. <laughs> like I've never thought about that before. I'm sorry, we've got to we've got to plumb the deck. Like, got to turn out the content, Kate. But like that's 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 like a fairly uh, tried and true style of crossword theme. But if I if I wanted uh, to do something a little bit more involved, like if I wanted the wit in your last name to follow the like a staircase wit, is that phrase familiar? The like I when you come up when you come up with a comeback like too late, the staircase wit, like I could build the hmm. W I T in a staircase pattern so that your name actually moves up uh, one uh, row in the crossword. And so that, this is. That so this is something that's more difficult execution-wise, more di difficult theme. So Pontiac asks in the thing, how do they design the mirror image symmetrical shape? And so this kind of gets into like kind of what you're saying. If there is a mm. like a like something where the theme of the puzzle dictates where the black squares go, I would imagine you put the black squares in, and then kind of a little bit can play with them, maybe depending on like uh, uh you know maybe you make them go shift over one or shift over two or like something like that um is that how that works how does uh, i i could just share my screen with you and show you right now yeah how about please. that please that would be awesome uh you should be able to go to that yep there you go you should be able to go to the top and then there you go all Whoa. right so i just jotted down um, some of those ideas, but um, this is gonna be that end cut idea. And because your name is uh, 11 letters long, that means it can go right here How in the How do you part. know that my name is 11 letters long? Because I've, I'm, I'm a Are you really spots. good at that? Is that like a weird, <laughs> is that like a weird party trick that you do? <laughs> yeah. It is because we always want to know whether a word or phrase is 15 letters long because that's uh, that's the exact width of your standard crossword puzzle. So you get really good at, at judging um, that kind of thing. So here's uh, here's that theme idea uh, rendered in the orientation that you generally see. Um, their, the themers are spread out. They're not stacked on top of each other. And as you can see, they're organized symmetrically. Um, so Love Shack and Backslash uh, are in the symmetrical part of the grid. 
if you turn this grid upside down, the black squares would look just the same, and they're both nine letters, so they occupy um, uh, reciprocal slots, just like parsnip and end cuts. And then your name is an odd number of letters, so I can stack it right here in the middle of the grid. Um, and then beyond that, I'm trying to get rid of all of this red. The red tells me that I don't have anything in my word list that can pass through. This little S is telling me that among all of the words in my word list, this has to be an S based on potential crossings. Oh, um, interesting. And then I'm kind of like minding how many black squares, you don't want to use too many black squares. Editors usually say like stop around like 20, uh, sorry, 36 or 38. Um, and then at this point, uh, I can start filling the grid because the computer at least is telling me that there aren't any impossible crossings. Um, whether or not this is going to be able to fill with words that I universally like uh, is another story. Um, but uh, how many that's... times do you put things in, and at some point hmm. ever get to the very last, like get to like the fourth or fifth iter? Like I don't know. Get and when you've done it by hand, um, um, are you? How much of what the computer is doing do you just are you are you just kind of doing with a thousand trials and error and how much of it are you kind of able to intuit this doesn't look like you know it could support a word across it yeah. um, and like how much of that is instinct and how much of that is that you try a thousand things and can't figure it out. The, the reason I can do this very, very quickly nowadays is because I've iterated so many times. And as you suggested, I have um, a pretty decent intuitive sense as to if, there too, if there's too much white space in an area um, that creates too many crossing dependencies. Um, that's why you'll never see a crossword that's just, you know, a 15 by 15 grid with no black squares in it. Um, you know, I'll note that uh, there are too many uncommon letters in a particular region of the grid, and I'll need to break them up because I can intuit that that part of the grid's not going to fill because those uncommon letters create uh, too many uh, diminishing uh, uh, possibilities um, for what can cross them. Um, so the more you do it, the more it becomes uh, an exercise in, in kind of it's, I'm making it sound mystical, but it's just practice. No, um, uh, I think this is awesome, yeah. and I just it's so fascinating. So uh, we have a question questions. from uh, Andrew McMahon, who I think is no longer on. Uh, so I'll just read it. What do you think about AI-generated crossword puzzles? Can you mm -hmm. immediately tell the difference between those and human-generated ones, or not? Yeah, uh, you can always tell. Um, I, I see people in the comments saying, uh, like, how can technology, you know, really be that important in making a, a, a decent crossword puzzle? The creative, the generative part of it, a, a robot, robots still aren't good at, at wordplay. They're not good at puns. They're not good at humor. Um, so that's out. The only thing they're good at is, is alerting you as to when you've got very few options on the table. And if the computer is saying this part of your grid is can only accommodate one or two words, maybe one of them's uh, a, a, an esoteric little piece of trivia, maybe another is a you know a, a, a horse and carriage, a word for a horse and carriage from like ancient Mesopotamia that two people in the world know. Um, <laughs> the computer can tell you that. So the why I'm so the reason I'm so confident in saying that your average crossword puzzle is better in 2020 than it was in the, in the 1970s is because uh, we can very quickly in the course of 10 or so minutes create a crossword puzzle that has no esoterica, no trivia, no proper nouns uh, right away. And that would have been an impossibility in the 1970s. Now, whether or not that puzzle is fun to solve and whether or not the words that you've chosen are interesting to the solver, that's completely qualitative. Uh, but that's why no one right. likes, not everyone likes any individual crossword puzzle because the individual words are going to speak to individual solvers in very different ways. That's so, that's like a, a great question, Ben. And then I think that that's, so is the, I mean. So if you question. have questions, this is a great time to get in. Um, I, Kate, are you still there or have you dropped oh, yeah. away? Do you guys not hear me? Sorry, I was talking. 
Hello? Oh, I heard you. I think Kate, I think Kate has turned into a pumpkin. Uh, so let's remove her from the screen, and I will try to bring Ross. her in well, again while you're answering the next question. Um, so um, how many of these are you? You have a day job, um, but you're doing a fair bit of... Um, of uh, uh, like how, how much of your time is this occupying at this point? Yeah. Um, I... By virtue of being in quarantine, uh, I now uh, do my day job, and and I do crossword puzzles, and then I and then I fall asleep on a semi-constructed grid, and I wake up in the morning and start again. I, I um, you've missed a you've missed a golden opportunity. My my partner is a, a a PhD up here at Harvard studying crime and corruption in Rio de Janeiro, and 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 she's the one you really should have gotten. Oh no, we're gonna have her on. I was gonna tell Ben about this. She sounds awesome. This she is. is like. Anyways, like so, so Ross's partner is um, a Harvard PhD, and she is doing all of this kind of cool work on crime and corruption in Rio, as he just said. And uh, yeah. she would be great for for the for us. I think it would be kind of fascinating. Also, like Bolsonaro is just like completely losing it with everything happening with COVID right now. Um, so no. yeah, I was going to mention that, but um, let's do it. Yeah. Um, the reason awesome. I bring her up is because. Uh, my, my life these days is my job, crossword puzzles, and um, giving thanks to my wonderful partner who indulges the, the deepening crossword obsession. I think it's great, though. Like, I also kind of think that there's this weird, interesting thing. So Ben mentioned that, like, you know, there's visual art stuff he's not good at. But, like, I was always good at visual arts, but I was really bad at negative space visual arts. So mm. I can't, like, carve a pumpkin into like some beautiful like thing right like I don't think about the extraction like I can't think in that way I like think about the positively putting lines on paper or paint on a canvas. I once carved a beautiful Barack Obama pumpkin and put it over my head for the trick-or-treaters wow. that's a good story Ben <laughs> it was Bar I, I called it Barack pumpkin head um, that's pretty good <laughs> uh, it was a like it was identifiably Barack Obama. Every parent uh, who the kids, of course, didn't care. They just wanted the candy, and they thought it was funny that I had a pumpkin over my head. But the parents all recognized it as Barack Obama. Uh, Obama. I may even have a picture of Barack Pumpkin Head somewhere. That's pretty good. Um, I can't like the way that you're describing this though, Ross is like kind of thinking about uh, thinking about the. I kind of had. I was thinking about, um, I think it was, I, I think it was Pauline, maybe not, um, asked a question basically about Scrabble. And I was thinking about like how Scrabble is the opposite, opposite in some ways from crosswords and that you're, it is, but it is, it is opposite of doing a crossword, but maybe it's very similar to like constructing a crossword puzzle. Does that make sense? Like it would seem to make, you know. I don't know. I think that there is. But at the same time, Scrabble seems like the version of life that is the impossibility that you previously acknowledged, which is like no one does a 15 by 15 grid without any black spaces. And, you know, anyway. Um, so I guess I kind of am curious as to are you really good at Scrabble now and are we never going to play Scrabble again because you're just going to beat me? Uh, I am exceptionally good at Scrabble, but that, that has were you been. always good at Scrabble though? I think these are these are related but distinct magisteria. Um, really? Crossword making a crossword puzzle is all about magisteria. Uh, Do you talk like a thesaurus all the time now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Kate, it's incredibly mean. charming, and I feel like I'm becoming more intelligent for listening to you, but it is also a little bit intimidating. <laughs> Well, when you lead with, uh, when you, you brought me on because I'm a New York Times crossword puzzle constructor, so I, I have, I, I think there's a certain uh, bar to call in, like, you know, in retentiveness and, uh, you know, uh, and, 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 and vocabulary. I think you, you, like, you would not want to disgrace the profession by coming on here and using one syllable words. That's right. I mean, right. wouldn't that, that would be like a, a that, I should be, that be a piece of performance art if you 
you know, as a New York Times crossword puzzle constructor came on and answered only in grunts <laughs> and kind of monosyllables. <laughs> Ross is better you know, than that. It's the end of the Scrabble game that starts to get like a crossword puzzle because then you're you're having to manage, uh, you, you know, dependencies and stuff that's already there. Uh, the beginning of a Scrabble game is wow. There's too, too few constraints. It gives me, it gives me palpitation. So when, um, so just kind of, we have like about 15 minutes left, and I'm very curious to kind of pivot a little bit back to your online, the stuff that you're doing for your job. Yeah. And how kind of what making crosswords has kind of taught you about uh, the stuff that you're doing for your job and oh, yeah. uh, being a teacher generally. I mean, it seems to me to be a really if you're introspective about it a very and you are like an introspective person um to be a very amazing kind of thing to go through to realize that it just kind of makes you reframe the structure of everything around you and how things are kind of built and how systems are designed and how you go in and out of things and how people respond to certain types of prompts, how people are tricked by certain types of prompts. I would think that all of that is something that like kind of would be an incredibly, incredibly useful tool for a teacher. I, I mean, the, the biggest, the, the most important thing I've learned from cross reconstruction is the importance of intellectual empathy um, because the idea is to create something that is um, enjoyable and accessible to as broad a swath of um, potential solvers um, as you can. And, and likewise, when you're putting out curriculum online, if you want a curriculum that is um, inclusive and progressive and in 2020 um, anti-racist um, you have to understand that like if you're like a white person or in my case a 36 year old white guy from Cambridge um, you're making all of these implicit decisions all the time so when I make a crossword puzzle and I go back through it and I realize that every single human that I reference in the clues in the grid are like men for example um that you know that someone pointed that out to me about a year ago about one of my grids in the new york times and i was like well fuck like um this is this is a problem there needs to be like a a, a systematic way to uh you know to stay empathetic to what you're putting in your puzzles uh what sorts of trivia i mean like how many times have you solved the new york times crossword puzzle and, and it's like a golf game and oh totally like completely, and, I have, yes. But like, how many how many times have you you solved? Well, that well, that keeps ten year old girls like, from Hispanic backgrounds away from crossword puzzles, and they're going to feel like an idiot for not knowing like that type of thing. But it's a totally like it's just it's really like kind of culturally guarded. Um, it's a great it's a I think it's a really wonderful point, um, and it's a great kind of like you're kind of like a crossword crit. Uh, I mean. Back in March, I stopped submitting puzzles, um, solo constructed puzzles to the New York Times. Because, really? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a zero-sum game. Any puzzle that I send them that they take is a puzzle that is not being constructed by, um, uh, you know, some of the people that are not well represented in Crossroads. And like I said, it's usually it's, it's you know, white males, it's people that look like me who are constructing them. So I... Back in March, I, I, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm done sending them puzzles by myself, but what I will do is teach people how to make crossword puzzles. And I'll collaborate on puzzles uh, with people um, who, who uh, with women, with people of color, uh, who, whose uh, perspectives and interests and passions will be reflected in the puzzles that they create that are not like the puzzles that I'd create with maximal you know, intellectual empathy. Um, so what that, about that, like the definitions of things in like shorthand and kind of different types of like use of language? Like I, that would also oh, yeah. seem to like, like that would seem to play right into this, right? Like kind of expanding out of Webster's and the OED or whatever else and kind of getting into kind of, uh, yeah, into other types of language. Did you guys notice the, the backlash against 
the word irregardless being added as a synonym for regardless by, I think it was Webster's, maybe? Oh, yeah. yeah, I I share that uh, distaste to be honest. <laughs> so here's an inter here's an interesting question um, from our uh, YouTube channel. Um, referring back to your earlier story um, about how you got interested in crossword puzzles, do you see any way to actually get ten year old Hispanic girls interested in puzzles? I mean this is a serious question. It does seem to be an older middle class hobby to do them. Um, so first of all, I'm interested in your sense of whether that the questions, assumptions about the demographics of crossword puzzle doing are accurate. I mean, do, is, is this in fact, to your knowledge, uh, a white and kind of uh, like, like your student was uh, reflecting, does it in fact reflect, is there a demographics of, of crossword puzzle doing? And to the extent that there is, do you think that's a problem or do you think that like, you know, uh, like is there, is there, like we've, we talk about this sometime with respect to chess, you know, is it actually a good for people to spend their time doing chess, playing mm. chess, or is it only the uh a good insofar as you think it's good that people might want to play chess right like chess is a super uh you know the demographics of chess are super white and super male and um and uh, you know you can like if you think that people are getting a whole lot that's good and valuable out of playing chess that's a problem if you think that they're not and actually chess is mostly a way to knock around and spend time, um, then maybe it's not a problem. So I guess my, my question about the question is, first of all, is the assumption behind the question right? Yeah. And to the extent that it is right, to what extent is it a problem? Um, when I start to have these conversations with people about crosswords, we start to conflate three groups of people. Uh, the first one is uh, who, we, who a particular puzzle solving audience actually is. And that's kind of a mystery. Two, who an editor or the constructor of the puzzle imagines that solving audience to be. Uh, and three, who the editor or the constructor believes their audience should be. And if you're okay with uh, crossword puzzles being uh, the domain of older white people, then you know why bother having the conversation in the first place? Because I think that is what most people would say probably is that's where the demographic skews. And it's, it starts and ends with the content. I, I mean, and how could it not? Like, if you pick up a puzzle in the, and one across is Verdi Opera of 1744. And it's Verdi wasn't by born by 1744, but that's okay. There you go. Oh, my, man. No, no. This Sorry. Is, this, 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 this is exactly the point. Like, you have a frame of reference. And that puzzle is not immediately alienating to you. Yeah, I would and never know that. And that, but if the puzzles one across is uh, 2020 chart topper for Ariana Grande, then uh, that might alienate other people. But I, my attitude is of crossword puzzles should alienate everyone uh, in an equal opportunity way. Um, and the difference between a game of chess and a crossword puzzle is when a game of chess is over, the, that game of chess hasn't said anything to validate or invalidate, you know, culture the cultural zeitgeist you know but the New York that's times a really crossword, interesting point the new york times crossword but it's a cultural institution and every single day the new york times crossword puzzle is printing what it considers to be uh worthy tr uh, trivia that's worthy of knowing um words that are worthy of knowing syntax and uh and grammar that's worthy of using and if all of those things are reflecting your experience and the kinds of syntax, grammar, and, and cultural uh, touchstones that are meaningful to you, then you're going to start solving the puzzle, and so are your kids and the people around you in your community, and we'll go from there. So I. All right. Oh, and, sorry. Go ahead, Kate. Yeah. No, no. Really quick. Um, so this is to that point. I just thought it's worth like uh, you sent Ben and I, ben, well, you sent me and I forwarded it to Ben uh, mm -hmm. a bunch of like really great like puzzles, like some of your favorite. And I love this puzzle. And I think it really, I did it before I came on. And um, I think it hits exactly what you're saying. Hello, Ruby. <laughs> 
Um, that was like quite the pass by that we got with like the <laughs> very straight up tail. Um, so, I mean, so here's something like you say abbreviation. That means, yes, the freaking weekend. Right. That's like the freaking weekend is like definitely something that millennials use. Right. That's not like a, but everyone also knows what the abbreviation for the weekend is. Hey right? there, and fellow so, young person. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so there's that. And then you have kind of something for like the 80 something wicked game vocalist, Chris. Um, it took me a long time to remember that last name. Yeah. Um, I, like the end of the puzzle. Um, anyways. Bill Ayer's memoir subtitled Confessions of an P- American Dissident. Okay, so I did not remember that reference. Uh, you know, the, the title of it before the subtitle is Public yeah. Enemy. Right. And then there was like this interesting moment in which I like went on Wikipedia and went and read all about Public Enemy and this entire like memoir and all about Bill Ayer's and like thought that it was, you know, I had just never done that. And so, like, to the point, Ben, that, like, between chess and, like, s- like crosswords is that there is, like, I'm not going to, I think that they both do wildly different things and, like, exercise different muscles. But I will say that, like, there can be these moments of kind of, uh, for me anyways, of, like, oh, yeah, I kind of know about that. What was that about? Like, that's kind of interesting. And then I go oh, I and, like, that. spend, like, literally, like, three hours of my life down in Wikipedia wormhole. But, like, in the same thing, you have Hamilton or Tour, Lynn manuel Miranda. Or Lynn, is, you said blank, but mm-hmm. it's Lynn. And then, like, Uzo Aduba, Orange is the New Black. Like, you have Pepe Le Pew. You have, you know, Grey's Anatomy. Also, query whether you can remember how Grey's Anatomy is actually spelled, whether it's with an E or an A. Like... You know all of these various types of things, and I just think that there's just like I thought. I thought that this, I like, I actually, I, you hadn't talked to me yet about this on kind of on purpose. I didn't ask you anything about like kind of any of the things that have come up on the show, and I think that this puzzle is like such a beautiful example of it. It's cross generational. It's cross. It's like very like interracial. It's cross cultural. It's like <clears throat> it's just a really like cage fighting sport for short. Like, I don't know. There's just like things like that. Like not everyone knows what cage fighting is called for short, right? Like I bet like there's a bunch of people on the Upper East Side that don't know what it's (laughs) called for short. Like there's- I I love learning things from crossword puzzles. And and honestly, at the end of the day, my attitude is uh, if you, from day day over day, your puzzle should have something for everyone. And uh, young, old, black, white, and and, and you, you need like a good, diverse editorial team and a diverse set of people making the puzzle to ensure that that's happening. But there should be something for everyone. And if you put in a piece of trivia, whether it's Verdi or Ariana Grande, cross it with gettable stuff. And then- Yeah, or like will, you will did have in this Grande one, I fucked it up. You, <laughs> you had in this one, a something about, what was it? One over par. And I thought it was an eagle, and that's not correct. It's a bogey. And I put in the wrong thing. I had to erase it. <laughs> but if I had been, to Tony Kava's point, what about something for the olds? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, like, maybe I would have known that. Um, or, like, you know, there was a bunch of stuff. You have, you have, some, you have some musician, Yoko. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a trying to get. One. I'm trying to get older than that. Um, uh, there's Tech Quarterly, founded in 1872. There you go, Tony. <laughs> it's, it's actually All right, we've, we've got three questions in the queue. I want to get through them before we, before we close out. Um, did your parents have an impact on your chosen employment? You've mentioned uh, the, who your father is, but you haven't mentioned your mother. So uh, why don't you... Uh, 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 I, I guess you you may have to back up, and uh, the the question assumes some some facts not yet in evidence. Oh um, yeah, no. I, uh, my my mother is even lovelier and uh, more notable, I, I would imagine, than my father. She's Jane Pauley, the TV news anchor, and um, I, yeah, how could they not? I don't know. Uh, they're both journalists. They're both uh, 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 pe- people of. Um, culture and, and moms as cosmopolitan as they get uh yeah yeah absolutely none of this would have would have happened without jane and gary 
you know, showing what's possible. But also, <laughs> but also Ross, like as your friend and like, they're not, it's not just your parents who are like part of it. You have a very close family. You have a twin sister mm-hmm. and like a younger brother who also went to Brown with us. Yeah. And then like, they're like, I mean, and all of you were like rock solid back each other up in each other's corners like that was always like it was a profound I mean beyond what everyone did and how rock star it was all the time you guys were always just like I don't know just like a really like I remember like specifically it just like was a really like really tight family yeah no the biggest gift my parents gave us was um keeping our heads screwed on straight Donald Trump uh Eric Trump was my classmate for most of grade school um I went oh, to really a, I went to a rich kid prep school in Manhattan uh it, it, it was hard for a lot of those kids to maintain perspective and, and get outside their own heads, my, myself included. My parents, my parents did their credit. Um, that was the biggest gift they gave us, aside from like no college debt and infinite, you know, uh, self-efficacy. Um, was yeah, um, keeping us yeah. grounded. Totally. Last question: Do you think that crosswords are supposed to be intellectually aspirational? Yes, one hundred percent. I mean, what, what do you and, mean? and what do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to interpret that. The the like good learn like good learning goals in school. The best daily learning goal is in your like zone of proximal development. It's a little bit harder than you would do by yourself with no guidance and without you know uh, outside input. And the crossword puzzle gives you the outside input. They're called the down answers, and they give you you know, the beat, the first letter and like the, the sixth letter. And you can teach yourself uh, with those little legs up. Um, and good, I think a good crossword puzzle is crunchy and you have to work at it and find your way into it. And you're going to learn a couple of things um, solving the crossword puzzle. You're going to learn some synonyms. You're going to learn some perseverance, uh, hopefully. Some bad puns. Some bad, bad puns that only exist in the world of, of crosswords. Um, so sure, yeah, intellectually aspirational. Let's go with that. Cool. Um, so we're gonna wrap up. Thank you so much for coming, Ross. I have one last it's question a pl- about pleasure to meet you. Yeah, likewise, guys. This was awesome. And so, um, when I um, okay, so sometimes when I'm doing, a cro- I just need you to tell me again that this is okay. Um, sometimes when I'm doing a crossword. And I like remember a related hint that mm. could also be a hint that is not listed. Uh, like, um, and I Google that hint, but not the hint that was given in the crossword puzzle, but my own generated hint for the for the for the solution. And I happen to find the answer to the crossword. Um, that's not cheating, right? <laughs> I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I know this is a burden for a lot of people. So as a, a, as a crossword constructor, I want to bless everyone's decision to reveal a square, to look up an answer. That's not cheating. That's learning how to solve crossword problems. Yep. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Perfect. Thank you again. Kate, what do we have for tomorrow? Uh... We don't, we don't know yet, tomorrow. right? Yeah, we have no idea. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll figure it out. It'll be episode 119. We'll be back. And uh, until then. Uh, we don't have fun anymore. So in lieu of fun, we also no longer have those crossword puzzle hotlines that you would pay three dollars a minute to help you with your crossword <laughs> thank you google okay <laughs> excellent uh that's plenty worth giving up fun for have a good day everybody we will see you tomorrow bye ross it was fun, fun hanging out with you see you